Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, this is like a really exciting and not so stressful time for me because it's like a huge auditorium and shout out to the people in the cheap seats. Thank you so much for attending. Um, my name is uh, Adolfo Garcia Letia. I am a staff software engineer with Chainguard. And uh, we are a company, it's a new startup that we are working on the supply chain security space. And um, my, I am also one of the tech leads with Kubernetes Sig Release. Uh, Sig Release is the outfit on side of Kubernetes uh, who takes care of releasing all of the software artifacts and um, compiling those binaries that you use and love probably every day. Um, I am also a huge Star Wars fan, and uh, I like to ride my bike all over the world. So uh, with that, I would like to start. So I would like to talk to you about human stories, how the power they have to connect us, and about the things that we... Ah, just kidding. <laughs> I was... Uh, I just figured since people and great speakers use stories all of the time and also religions just uh, convey their messages with stories, I might as well do that. So I'm going to quote from the scripture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Story number one, that motivator. So remember that time when you wanted to be like that intergalactic hero and just travel all the way out to the outer rim with your pet robot? and you finally convinced your uncle to go get one great model that you wanted, only to arrive to your house and have it malfunction and explode in your face. And now, of course, the guy that sold it to you is laughing at you and making you cry and you're all desperate. Well, yeah, that's a big problem. What was the problem right there? You just accepted a bad, a bad component in your, in, in to your, what you just got. So, if the Jaguars there would have been a responsible supply chain citizen, they probably would have produced an S-bomb describing everything inside of that R5 robot, uh, just to ensure that uh, you at least were aware of what you were getting. Right, so story number two, career goals. So it finally happened, right? That job that you really wanted has become a reality and you are among the organizations that you always wanted, and you're not just going to be there. Uh, actually, you are not that guy, you are that one, <laughs> but you're going to grow, you're going to go places. Uh, and you've, since you were a, a kid, you were always followed those role models that you wanted to become, uh, and your organization always opens up new opportunities for people to grow. So you're <laughs> actually pretty fine. So finally, that project that you really wanted to work on happens. It, it shows at your door, or well, maybe just uh, in the, ingested by the tractor beam into the space station. Your team is already working. Management upstairs is doing like all of the important stuff, and you are in charge of the most critical piece of the project. Uh, the SSU, and you of course understand what's your, your what's on, on your hands, right? So. And uh, once you um, understand the, your part in the organization, you get like a strange visit, visit and uh, of course you'll t your team is fooled by those guys, which uh, convince, convince them to, to get those people in, and everything breaks loose inside. And not only that, but uh, they do so by bad acting, uh, which also, um, well, uh, it's those two guys that always get the girls and you don't, which makes it even worse. So your boss is now really angry at you and you simply, all of the project went down because of you. So what happened there? You accepted into your project a falsified whatever, be it a dependency, a module, could it be an artifact, a binary that was compromised? So what's the solution to that? Sign your things whenever you are accepting or producing things for others, you might as well sign them and verify them. If you ingest some uh, dependency, you have to make sure that it's coming from where it's supposed to be. There are now tools, Six or Salsa, that will help you build that uh, signing architecture right and also provide you with the proper tools to make that uh, easy. Final story. Yeah, bath carbonate results. So, 
since forever you wanted to make a really nice picture for your living room comprised of your worst enemy, hang it there in carbonite. And so you finally raise the money, rent the facility, invite all of your friends to watch, set the thing going, and then ding, you get this guy. So for those who are not Star Wars fans, this is not what's supposed to happen. This is um, George Lucas instead of Han Solo in the Carbonite. Uh, and then you are all confused that you don't understand what's happening. And uh, so how did that guy get in there? So someone put it in there? Did I, well, did I make a mistake? Uh, you simply don't know. Uh, and the, the worst part, of course, is that your boss is now on top of you. You know, how he can get sometimes like, oh, you're stupid. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So, why couldn't he tell what went on down there? Because there was no provenance information. So, you need to get like a record, a formal record that you can query and understand what's happening inside of your build process. Uh, for that, we have like also Salsa can help because it helps you structure uh, where and it makes you understand where you're doing things right, where you're doing things wrong and if uh, you're missing one of the pieces. Also, uh, the Intoto project makes you like tie all of those uh, information about your build process together. So the idea is, if you generate a provenance attestation of each of the steps in your build process, you get like a nice record of what went in, what went out, and what uh, were the parameters that you, uh, used, to, you used to run that, that step. And uh, you sign everything, and at the end, you can easily detect where, each, where any of those things went, went wrong. OK, so <laughs> enough of, the, <laughs> of this stupidity, sorry. Um, OK, the next one. So first, I want to go like, give a, like a high level overview of how the Kubernetes projects uh, get released. This is not only for Kubernetes itself, but also for some of the tinier Kubernetes projects. So you have things like Cluster API, KOps, all of those projects are, in theory, or well, at least they have the, what I'm going to show next available to them to, to, to release their, their artifacts. So a project in Kubernetes uh, usually gets its own project and staging bucket. And I'm gonna go in, not going to go into details, but the idea is that they build their artifacts, stage them in their bucket and in their registries, and from there, we promote them. Uh, this is an actual picture of the image promoter for Kubernetes. Trust me, I'm the tech lead, I know. So. And um, this promoter copies everything to the final release buckets and where they finally rest for everybody to pull and consume. So this is like a high-level overview. In, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper into how Kubernetes gets released, the actual Kubernetes images and binaries. So we start with a build. We build the things, we build the source code with, uh, at a certain build point, and we uh, generate the binaries and the images. And then we push those to staging, like we showed on the, on the previous one. But um, we, what we did to secure, make this a little bit more hardened and secure was we pushed more steps into between building and pushing. So the first one, we built an S-bomb. This Kubernetes got its first S-bomb like, what, like two years, one year and a half ago, uh, detailing everything that you needed to know. So uh, this satisfies the problem of if we ship a Kubernetes with a bad motivator inside, we want to know right away, as soon as possible. So even at some point, you can even imagine stopping the, the build if we detect one of those components to be bad or compromised. The second one, uh, we attest to the provenance of the artifacts that we are generating there. Uh, the first, uh, we record the source code, so we clone Kubernetes, Kubernetes. We establish the build point at, at which we are going to be uh, building, and all of that goes into the attestation. And we record the parameters uh, for that uh, for that build, and uh, which apply to all of the subjects that we are attesting to. And finally, we sign the images during staging. So this is so that you, in 
relating to the stories before, that you were in, ensuring that you get at some trooper and not something else by surprise. So the first thing is, when we started all of this work, uh, we were like just testing the waters to see how it went. There are problems with this approach. I don't know if anybody can see the detector problem that's going on inside of this staging process. No. So the problem is this. We are generating the provenance at the stations inside of the, of the staging process. You should not do that. If you generate a provenance at a station from inside your build process, anyone that compromises that is going to can falsify, potentially falsify the, the artifact. So you may get an attestation that says, okay, I built this from Kubernetes, Kubernetes, whatever build point. Well, in reality, it could be from pulling from another repository somewhere, a clone of a hacked Kubernetes uh, tree. So this is, uh, we did this uh, like in a, a very early days of Salsa 0.1. So this is one thing that we have to change. I just wanted to explain and everybody, let everybody know why this is structured the way it is right now. We're, it's going to be changing soon. So after we have everything built and signed, we pushed everything to the staging repositories, and we signed those artifacts. And then after that, we, the next step is that we check the, the we, we start the promotion process. So Kubernetes itself doesn't yet use the file promoter. We just use the image promoter. So the, we have two processes, one for promoting images and, state, and publishing them to the production registries, and another process to promote files. We haven't yet gotten to finish the file part, but it's, it's getting there. So when we kick, up, we kick off the artifact promotion, we check those signatures. Why? Because once, if we get images, we, we are trying to promote images from a staging process, we want to make sure and absolutely sure that we are not promoting images pushed by someone, something else, elsewhere. So we check those signatures to ensure that we are dealing with the real thing that we're expecting. The idea is don't let the artifact promoter trust the staging. Just treat it as a process somewhere else. Zero trust, I think that would be the, the catchphrase here. So after that, we copy all of the images to their production registries. And once they're there, we take the signatures from the original staging and transfer those and append them to the, to the images in one of the registries, in the, in the production registry. And then finally, we sign them again. And why do we sign them again? The idea is once we, we promote these images, they are going to end up in the production registry and they will, get, they will have two signatures attached to them. The first one uh, is going to be the signature uh, from the release engineering team, which is us that build the thing. And then the second one that we add there is the Kubernetes wire signature, so Kubernetes organization wide signature. So when you, if you verify the, the, the images that we just pushed to production, you will be sure that one, they were built by the release engineering team, and second, that uh, the Kubernetes organization has officially released those artifacts. And finally, uh, we take all of those uh, images and uh, mirror them to the regions where you can uh, finally pull them from kates.gcr.io. And the other part of the release process is the, the release stage itself. So this one is not yet as, as advanced. What we do here is we check the artifact provenance of the, of the files that we're promoting. Why do we check them at, at the, when we kick off the release? Well, the reason is this. If you think about it, the images are, are already published but at this point. And the problem is we cannot, uh, so this, this process here is, um, is kicked off uh, by, uh, via a process out, uh, an external process that we cannot trust. So we check the artifacts that it, the, the invocation is commanding us to run. So we check, okay, if I'm going to release this list of artifacts, and we have the complete list because it's in the SBOM, we check the provenance, and the, the provenance tells us, okay, that list of artifacts you're about to release actually comes from the staging. 
So that's the first one. The second is we check the image signatures. Images at this point are already published. So even if we haven't yet sent those emails, maybe you may be familiar with of Kubernetes 120, whatever is released, you can pull the images at that point. So before we call the release complete, we check those signatures because at, in release, we're going to be publishing a set of artifacts that also reference those images. So we publish uh, release notes, documentation, we, pu we publish the SBOMs. So we need to ensure that those uh, digests of the images we're publishing are, in fact, what they're supposed to be. Finally, well, not finally, but almost, uh, we attest to the provenance. So we are generating a provenance at the station during staging, and that lets us know what went into staging, what was the process that we, that we ran to transform, transform the inputs, and the list of outputs that we got there. And the second is we produce another at, uh, provenance at the station right here, and that lets, lets us know in the future um, uh, if we have to go back and check what the release uh, step did, we have to ensure that uh, we can check what went on during a release in the past. Um, again, same thing as with the attestation produced during staging. This should not be produced in there because it, you, you, you cannot trust the parameters that went into the attestation. So if you're using this architecture as a reference for your project or your builds uh, uh, in your company, Keep in mind that attestation should be generated outside of the build process in, in wh whatever way you can do them. There are some patterns emerging now which are useful and uh, happy to, to chat about them with anyone. And we finally copy those files to the production bucket. At this stage, uh, relevant to this talk, we push to the production bucket the um, attestations and the SBOMs. So we get like, at that point, we can have a complete release uh, where we have all of the artifacts, all of the dependencies described fully in the SBOM. We have the process covered, like if you can think about uh, the description of the artifacts in a vertical way, would be like the, the, the SBOM, and in an orthogonal way, you can think about the process documented from end to end uh, with the attestation. Except there's one that's missing. Uh, we are generating a station for this process, one for this process, and if you think about it, the, uh, the image promoter is missing. It's, uh, it's uh, at the stations. And that's a project that will be happening soon. I hope uh, by the next KubeCon we can show off uh, like a co complete picture of SAS at the stations from end to end. We're almost there. Uh, we have all the tooling, libraries, everything already developed, so they're, they're going to be there. So, well, yeah, it's, um, it's a lot uh, to consider. Just going to leave this a little bit so that you can uh, think and let it uh, digest it. Uh, but if we are going to have, like, the main takeaways for this, this uh, process, I'd say it would be like this. So three things to remember. So, first one. Observe and document your builds with salsa provenance at the station. So you want to be sure that you can go back and check what happened. Did, what, what was the actual source code that I pulled? What were the invocation of the commands that I did? And the more granular that you can split those at the stations and the more detail you can get into them, the better. Uh, at some point, uh, and this is something we've been seeing at Chengar, working and talking with customers, builds are going to have well, any, so your workloads, you can certainly consider a future where clusters will start demanding and enforcing policies based on, are you giving me a provenance attestation for this workload? No, then I'll reject it. Same thing with this one, same thing with everything. The next one, um, ensure that your artifacts are authentic and immutable by signing and verifying them. And it goes both ways. You as a player in the chain and you as a consumer of others. So you need to, to make sure that um, those artifacts cannot be changed from the moment someone released them to the moment that you're consuming them. And you, if you're a nice player in the whole supply chain, you should be ensuring the same thing for others. 
And finally, document all of your components by consuming and generating SBOMs for all of your uh, releases. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I, I hate to pile on the same thing all of the time, but examples sometimes uh, are useful. Log4j, how many people are using Log4j for examples? Well, if you had S-bombed the whole world, it would be like fairly easy to detect which workloads have, have, have a vulnerable Log4j uh, vulnerability in them. And finally, uh, it's, um, uh, I would like to just uh, leave you with uh, uh, thank you, and uh, just uh, in, uh, making, I, I wanted to just let you know that most of the tooling that we are building in SIG release to make all of this happen is we are trying to make, the, make it as general purpose as possible. So we have a tool for SBOMs. We have a tool, uh, the, the SBOM tool can generate part of the provenance attestations from you for, for, from your binaries. And so, uh, as we move forward, uh, most most uh, most of those artifacts are going to be uh, most of those tools are going to be available to you. And the final one is um, what was my final point? Well, okay, I think that's it. And and yeah, and if uh, I'm happy to uh, open it up for questions, if you have one, and um, otherwise, thank you. So first of all, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it uh, a lot. Thanks a lot. And uh, my question is, uh, how do, which format do you use to generate the SBOM? I saw the SPDX logo, but I, I was under the impression that that was for licenses more than actual uh, software versions. And uh, how do you feed it to, I mean, scanners or anything that can consume that format? Yeah, okay, so uh, the, first, the first challenge was issuing the SBOM, and we use SPDX. Uh, Kubernetes is a project of the CNCF, which in turn is part of the Linux Foundation, and SPDX is the SBOM standard from the Linux Foundation, so we use that. There have been some calls to uh, requests from people to, to, for us, uh, to us to, to use also Cyclone DX, and uh, I mean, we're open to it, but as you can see, we still have, uh, I mean, SIG release sounds like a big deal, but in reality, it's like, a, it's a really thin team. Uh, we're always looking for, con for contributors. If you want to join on any of this, please, uh, that was my final message, please come and help. And um, so we are like really stretched in. So, I mean, I would love to, 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 to work on a Cyclone DX version of the S1, but we simply do not have the volunteers all the time. So, um, if anyone wants to work on that, happy to have them over. Uh, I would certainly love to have our tool produce both standards. Uh, but yeah, currently it, that's one. And the second is we produce a first SBOM, and then we've been trying to feed it into some of the, of the security tools, and we've been doing, making improvements to the output as time has been going down. So for example, we, we saw that some of the, the, the security tools key on on the PURL of the packages, so we added that. And then there's uh, another project, well, another PR going to, to add the CPEs to it. And well, that, that's uh, the current status, no? <laughs> okay. Um. Um, two questions. Yeah. What's your primary threat model, and have you caught any attacks in the wild? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, can, can you repeat it? What is your primary threat model, and what is your? Have you caught any real attacks on the build process? So, oh, okay, some someone. Uh, this is this has been going on SIG security, which I'm not a part of, and they did the threat model, and the, the second part that I. Or, Got anything with a? Uh, not not yet. Not on our side. Uh, thanks. Also, big Star Wars fan. Um, you mentioned about the attestation process, mm -hmm. uh, and you said you might have any thoughts or like patterns that are emerging. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So one 
there are mainly two patterns that I have seen uh, to deal with uh, attesting to the build process. One is having a binary calling another binary or kicking off a, a process to ensure that, so in observing it. So you have a binary that calls a process, then the process runs, has some outputs, and the, the same binary sees what it output and records that. And it, so it knows what it pulled, what the way it ran it, and what came out. So that's one. And the other is <clears throat> calling on some sort of a webhook. So when you trigger uh, your build process, you call a webhook, start recording. When it finishes, you record the other but from the outside. So the idea is that some external entity observes it from outside. Those are the, the main two that I, that I know of. How, how do you protect the keys, the private keys that and are being used for, for signing? I don't okay. know if it's related with the threat modeling, probably, but uh, I would like to know how, how is the governance of yeah, that? Yeah, excellent yeah. question. So I don't know if you saw the Sixor logo on the talk. So we use Sixor for signing. Sixor is an awesome pro project uh, that you can go and visit our booth and down in the, in the expo hall. And Sixer allows you to sign things with ephemeral keys. We call this process keyless. It's not really keyless. We just use ephemeral certificates and keys that you were, the way it works is you generate a certificate. It's, it lasts like five minutes or so to sign your things. And then that certificate expires and the keys are now useless because the certificate has expired. And then you can, um, those, the, well, you can, you can always verify the, 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 the images because the certificate and its public key are stored in a public transparency log. So there's no key management and that's, that's all. And, and also the way you, you, you add the identity to the process is that it, it works with um, OIDC keys and the whole release process for Kubernetes runs in uh, Google Cloud Build. So we use credentials from service accounts uh, to, to give it the, the identity of the signer. Okay, so, and probably I didn't get the, the last part because and if you are creating ephemeral keys, you need to somehow sign those as well in order to be um, trusted, right? I mean, we are, you are creating ephemeral keys in order to sign that artifacts, but those ephemeral keys that you have been using for those process should be verified as well, that it's coming from uh, the right source. Yeah, yeah, so okay. the, the question is how the do I... How do you um, verify that you are creating that <laughs> ephemeral keys in from the trusted? From, yeah, say. yeah. So all of the all of the signatures and, and operations that happen with the Sixor tooling get stored in the in the transparency log. So when you receive an image, you get the the, the signature. So that signature has the metadata necessary to go back to the to the transparency log and see who uh, who gave the identity to the signer. And who um, and uh, if it well the, the the certificate to verify the the artifacts. Okay, thank you. I'm really excited to see this work because it aligns with a lot of the discussions that we've had within the CNCF security tag. So my question for you is, can you describe what kind of constraints or considerations you've put in place for the actual build environment itself and what those images are and what they contain, whether or not you have additional packages built into them and what those signs look like? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the the, the uh, Kubernetes release consists of about 50 images uh, for all architectures and all of the Kubernetes components. So there's one for um, uh, the API, one for the proxy, one, the, uh, all of those. And we also produce the, um, the binaries for, uh, for kubectl, uh, kubeadm, I think it gets released with the, the binaries if I don't remember correctly. And it's also like a, like a list of 20 or so binaries for all architectures. And um, as, so the environment, we, it's kind of, has been kind of evolving 
since a long time ago. When we started building all of this, we adapted all of the process to the actual environment and also to the human processes around the release. So uh, uh, the, the, first, the first big one was ensuring that the, the way that the, the build process was structured inside of Google Cloud Build allowed us to do this. And the second was we made sure that uh, no other uh, like risks were there. So we patched some of them that we found before and then uh, we started implementing all of this. And um, what was the second part of the question? What are in your build? What are you using in your build host, those build environments themselves? What constraints do you have on them? Such as, obviously, you don't want anybody SSHing into those boxes while you're doing the build. So what, what do you have installed? What do you not have purposefully installed? Okay, yeah. So the, the way it works is uh, this all work, all Kubernetes has a set of images that are the build environment for Kubernetes and for other projects. Uh, this image is called Gates Cloud Builder, if I don't remember correctly. And it's an image that we in SIG release produce with all of the, the tools that we want, want them to, to, that we need during the build process. Uh, this image is also built and signed by us. Um, and this, this is the environment, th that image creates the environment to run the build. So we define the steps in Cloud Build and it runs in there. And then the other notable part is the, the image promoter. Uh, the way the image promoter works is that you stage the, the images or files and then you open a PR adding those files to a manifest and then the community can go and authorize the promotion of those images. So someone opens a PR and it's the, the actual owners of the code that get the authority to approve those and after it gets approved, a, a post-submit job triggers a promoter and and they, and they, it well kicks up the job to promote. I don't know if that kind of answer it. Yeah, or just. Uh, if you are also building the builder, is that potentially like a, a, a kind of be, a vector of attack for compromising people? Like in our own company, we are worried about the same thing, where. If the CI team who run the runners, if they are compromised and the, the, the promotion tool is then compromised, would it be better to have the build be done by a separate team? Because then you can't, you'd have to get collusion then, right, to get the compromisation. Yeah, right. absolutely. So the question is, if you're building the builder within the same uh, process, can you trust it? Well, I would say never trust. That's the first one. Uh, but the second is, yeah, there is a, th th that is one that may be concerning. We build it in a separate process, so it runs in a different step, so it's kind of isolated, but it would be better to ensure that we are using a previous build, I mean, just to ensure that. Because if you are always pulling the latest version of the code, you don't know what got merged, right? But if you know that you have a, a known good build, you can simply use that one. Uh, that's a point for improvement. I can help in if you want to merge that. It's, I'm happy to, to, to guide you. And, um, but yeah, yeah, ideally, the builder should be already built and trusted before you, you, you kick in. Oh. Okay, I think that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much. <laughs>